I'd like to call to order the Hatfield Township Board of Commissioners workshop meeting for October 13th, 2021. Roll call. President Zippo. Here. Vice President Rogers. Here. Commissioner Andrus. Here. Commissioner Lees. Here. Commissioner Zimmerman. Here. Gee, that came out weird. Here. <laughs> so we have two special guests who are going to lead us with the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. Raj Patel and Yug Patel, his son, are going to lead us, uh, and uh, we're very excited to have them. And uh, it's pretty simple. All you do is get started, and we, we all follow. So I believe that he is the youngest, at least in my memory, the youngest uh, person to uh, lead us in the pledge. And if I heard correctly, are you six, young? You're a very tall six. <laughs> very tall six-year-old. <laughs> All right. Um, is there a motion for approval of tonight's agenda? So moved. moved. Motion by Vice President Rogers, second by Commissioner Andrus. All in favor of moving forward with the agenda before you and on the screen say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, say uh, no objection. We can move forward. That is approved. Citizens' comments. Any citizens' comments on agenda items? Okay, no questions on agenda items. We have a consent um, uh, item, and then we're going to move on to uh, um, a special item. But before we get to the, uh, the fun part, um, is there a motion to move into the record the consent items listed in your agenda? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Lees. Second. Second by Commissioner Zimmerman. Um, those consent items include the Hatfield Township Municipal Authority budget report for the month of August 2021, the police report for the month of September 2021, the Hatfield Township Municipal Authority meeting minutes for August 10, 2021. With that, I'll call a question. All in favor of moving those into the record say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, those are moved into the record. Okay, this is our fun part for the evening. Um, I think Aaron is going to pull up some, uh, some pictures. For those of you who did not know this, uh, and maybe, maybe I'll do this down at the podium. Aaron, does that make sense? Sure. By the way, I'm really glad I'm not wearing the exact same clothes that I was wearing in that photograph. I just looked up and I said, what am I? So that's a good thing. We, it's, a good, it's a good start. So for those of you who don't know, um, on October 8th, um, the commissioners and a number of residents went over to the Hatfield Museum and Historical Society for its ribbon cutting. And tonight, what we have decided to do is bring those board members uh, who are able to attend this evening up to be recognized and talk a little bit about the museum. And so let me start by bringing the board up and then talk well of you so that you have to stand here awkwardly and embarrassingly so that you feel as though, oh, why did he have to bring me up here and embarrass me? It's because it's our way of saying extra special thank you. So um, Larry Stevens, president of the society, Bob Kaler, Vice President. I don't think Bob was able to make it with tonight. Shirley Culp, who is the Secretary. Debbie Stevens, the Treasurer. Frank DeMara, Alan Culp, and Greg Schisler. So, in a nutshell, what these folks have single-handedly done is literally save the history of Hatfield for generations to come. And I'll let you talk about what a wonderful location you have now, but let me tell you a little bit about what they did to get us to this point, because I know that humility will probably stop them from doing so. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on Larry and Debbie in particular, although I know the other board members were very involved uh, as well, equally as involved. Larry and Debbie have had the artifacts of Hatfield in their house for decades, am I correct? Uh, to the point where I'm sure that it was house consuming and for the number of different events that they had to, we were talking about this just a couple of days ago, the time and energy and money spent moving artifacts from one location to come here for a show or to go to some other location so that those artifacts could be shown and that Larry and other board members could uh, teach 
um, the younger generation and even the older generation about Hatfield and the things that were here and, and what Hatfield was like, it's, it really is just unbelievable. It's astounding. So before I hand over the microphone to Larry, I do want to tell you this. If you do not go to the museum, you are missing out on not just an opportunity to see what is a great museum and interesting artifacts, but you're missing out on a piece of Hatfield that everyone should get to know. And I don't just say that because they're here, and I, I say that because it really is, it's kind of awe-inspiring to see where Hatfield was and where it is now and the progression that goes along with it, and they did a fantastic job laying it out so that you can kind of follow that along. And there's an upstairs and a downstairs. And it, it, you can just see people, their eyes light up when they see something like, there was an old cheerleading uniform from Hatfield High School, right? And uh, then there's all different kinds of artifacts from the different businesses in Hatfield High School. And so any um, educators who are either here tonight or watch uh, the, our, our broadcast of this meeting in the future, uh, I'd ask you to consider bringing your students to the museum because it really is a, just a, a fantastic experience for them. And I think it's something, it's, it's one of those places that kids will remember, I think, for the rest of their lives. You know, you remember when you go down to Washington, D.C. because there's really tall buildings. They're going to remember coming to Hatfield Museum because it's in their backyard. And they're going to see photographs of what their area used to look like or some uh, uh, black and white photograph of, of a portion of the, uh, portion of the uh, um, township that they recognize now. And I think that they will just be awestruck. <coughs> so on behalf of the entire township, for everything that you've done and that you'll do con in continuing to run the museum, we want to bring you up here, say thank you, and we greatly appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. Uh, it was great that uh, a good number of you were able to attend our, our uh, ribbon cutting and open house uh, on Friday, so thank you. For those of you that didn't get there yet, uh, make sure you stop in. Um, we estimate we had about 160 uh, guests or so walk through the building on those two days, so we consider our uh, grand opening event a big success. And, um, so uh, yeah, we, we uh, as I said to you before, I, when the society started uh, back in 1991, one of our main goals was to uh, find a building that we could uh, make Hatfield's history available to the community. And for 30 years, we looked and looked at, at, at a number of different buildings and nothing panned out. <coughs> And um, quite frankly, I was getting to the point where I had given up hope that we would ever have a building. I thought maybe we'll just set up a display case in the township building and maybe one in the borough building and, and that would be it. Um, then Bob Gottschall resigned, uh, that building became available and with the township and borough support, uh, you know, a beautiful uh, uh, building for Hatfield's local history uh, came together uh, very nicely. So. Um, we're, you know, the building itself is in great shape. We still have uh, work to do. We don't, we're not thrilled with the appearance of our ADA ramp out front. So, but, uh, so we're working on um, renovating that and making it more attractive. And uh, so it's not quite an eyesore on the front of the building. Uh, if you were at, uh, visited the museum, you saw a preview of our history garden out behind the building. And um, so we, we, our team threw that together in, in a week's time, less than a week's time. Uh, that was grass on Monday, and uh, by uh, Thursday evening, it was uh, kind of a, our preview for our history garden with a lot of uh, items uh, displayed uh, outside as well. Same thing with our basement display that came together in less than a week's time. Monday, uh, we had some renovations done, and then uh, all that week, we spent arranging things on the walls and setting up displays down the basement. So there's a, a ton to see at the museum. So I encourage you all to come out and see it. Um, we're open by appointment only now, so go to our website, uh, give us a call, and we'll be glad to set up a, a visit for you. I brought along uh, three items of, uh, with a strong Hatfield history over on the table there. Uh, Rosenberger's uh, glass milk bottle, 
course, Rosenberger's had a long history here in Hatfield Township. A little piggy bank from uh, Hatfield, uh, Hatfield Quality or Hatfield Packing Company back then. And, um, and then there's, uh, many of you probably are familiar with the Montgomery County Fair that was here in Hatfield for, uh, for many years. But before the Montgomery County Fair, there was the Tree Week Town Fair out on Bethlehem Pike and Tree Week Town Road. And that was a, a, an agricultural fair, much like the Montgomery County <laughs> Fair. And that, that uh, was held for two years, 1910, 1911. So there's a trophy there from one of the uh, exhibits at the Tree Week Town Fair. So uh, just a small e example of uh, a lot of the wonderful things available for you to see at the Hatfield Museum. So, and thanks for uh, recognizing us. We uh, appreciate it. And uh, come by and see the museum. Thank you. Before we uh, take your photograph and put it up on our website, which we always like to do, uh, let me also give a plug for the museum. You can become a member uh, at a very reasonable price. Um, I, there's myself and there's probably about 100 other, 100 plus other people who are, who are members. And one of the really neat things that you get is that on a uh, is it quarterly basis the uh, the newsletter uh, five times a year five times a year you get a newsletter and it's at least a page or two in front and back and uh, Larry I think in particular but probably the rest of the board members as well he they they write up some interesting event or some interesting something interesting about Hatfield and you get a very detailed description of it and I have to tell you when you open it up most mail comes in you know you shuffle through it you throw it away. This you open up and you find yourself 10 minutes later still standing in your kitchen, you know, over your kitchen table reading it, and you're saying things out loud, as my kids have said, Dad, who are you talking to? I say, wow, I didn't know that. Wow, that's really interesting. And so it, it really is uh, 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 an extra benefit and a, an extra, um, you know, uh, a nice uh, kind of cherry on the top if you were to join. And of course, it helps financially with the organization. So if you want to join, reach out to the museum um, on, the, uh, on the website. And like Larry said, make an arrangement to come see them. It is a wonderful experience. So again, thank you very much. Why don't we step over there? Okay. We'll take That doesn't work for a living. <laughs> Thank you. If, if you've not had the pleasure of sitting through one of Larry's uh, presentations, oh, you. um, that's, you're really missing out on a lot. Fantastic. Usually last hour, hour and a half. And um, talk about the details. It's, it's incredible. You do a fantastic job. We're blessed to have you, so thank you. Yes. Not just for what you're current, like I said, what you're currently doing, but what you've done over the years. This is a, a this is a 30-year uh, endeavor and effort, and there's not a lot of people who are willing and and uh, interested enough and care enough to do that. So thank you very much. Commissioners, one other thing I might as well pile on if we are praising Larry. Um, he's also going to write a feature for all of our newsletters coming out as as we proceed. This first one was just came out the last few weeks. Uh, about the speedway which i'm sure you're asked about often and there'll be more of those features moving forward so there'll be a nice partnership that we will continue. every saturday night when i was a kid you'd hear that speedway because we didn't have air conditioning at that time for you young folks <laughs> so the windows were open by the way i'm sure you run into this larry and debbie there is an entire generation or more who has no idea that there was a speed speedway <laughs> and if you ask them that where the speedway was they have no idea where that was um all right so um i'm going to uh, pass the baton to uh, commissioner zimmerman she's going to tell us about a special guest that we had in uh, hatfield uh, a few days ago yeah there was a lot of things going on on friday that was our busy morning with the museum and then 
afternoon. Um, we welcomed Governor Wolf to the township uh, when he went over to Lemons Food Group. So I was very happy that I was able to represent the township at that governor's visit to Clemens Food Group, and he was there to visit their expansion and speak about how state grants contributed to the project. Um, our state rep, Steve Malagari, assisted in helping Clemens acquire two grants. One was for $250,000 from the State Department of Community and Economic Development for training workers, and the second one was $2.5 million um, State Redevelopment Assistance Capital Program, which was towards the expansion. These grants not only will help the company grow, but the community as well. Um, it's going to grow jobs and a demand for farmers as well, not just in our region, but throughout the state. So there's currently about 2,600 workers um, at Clemens, and the expansion will add another 400 to maybe 450 more. The new facilities are on schedule to open up next July, July of 22. The company will not only be expanding production, but also its charitable efforts and donations, which we all know help to, to us here in the township. Uh, Representative Malagari stated, and this is a quote, uh, Clemens is not just a big, not just a huge part of the community, it is an industry that is crucial to our count country. Clemens Food Group is a major employer in Pennsylvania and in our region, and it's also part of our state's critical infrastructure, processing and providing food. As we invest in projects like Clemens Food Group, we truly invest in ourselves, end quote. So Clemens has been a part of our community for 125 years, um, run by now the fifth generation Clemens. And we're, <coughs> excuse me, we're very glad that they're here and we're thankful for all that they give back to the community. It was in the newspaper, um, so if you didn't get to see the article, you can check it out on the reporter online or on Steve Malagari's website as well. Yeah, that, that, that's great. Um, you know, I, uh, undoubtedly, I, <laughs> it's down the block from me, so I, I can tell you that not everyone is excited when they wake up in the morning and have to drive down the block and they have people with flags and whatnot to re directing and redirecting them. But the good news associated with is 450 uh, so jobs right here, here in the area, and it was, very, it was great that the, uh, the governor's office uh, took the time to, to come down and, and, uh, and, and recognize Clemens for doing that. So um, that's, that's great, and thank you. Our planning board also fast-tracked that whole project for them. Yeah, that's right. We have uh, we were uh, we have a we have a um, uh, a process with uh, with Clemens uh, that they were able to utilize in order to uh, fast-track that to get that done. And I think that was a part of when they they fast-tracked it when they got the grant from um, right when they after they learned that they got the grant from Harrisburg. Yep. All right. So not nearly as exciting. We're going to get into our committee reports. <clears throat> we'll jump right into the first planning and zoning committee vice president rogers okay the first one the only one for tonight is the small cell wireless facilities regulations didn't you have that yes thank you commissioner rogers this um there it goes uh this is the ordinance that we discussed in general terms two weeks ago um at our meeting on the 29th and if you recall that evening, we had a list of bullet points of all of the requirements, the performance requirements and the aesthetic requirements that we would build into the ordinance. Um, since that meeting, with the help of the solicitor's office, that, um, that one page list of bullet points has turned into a 13, 13 page ordinance, uh, which meets all the requirements of the, um, of, of the state act that was passed. It contains permitting requirements and procedural requirements, definitions, uh, all, of, all of the uh, boilerplate that goes into uh, justifying those bullet points that we discussed last time. So all of those requirements are in the ordinance uh, and now we are in a form that is, um, that's gonna pass muster as a, as a formal ordinance. It has been circulated to the County Planning Commission, we're waiting for their review to come in. It has been circulated to the uh, law library. It's been advertised, and it also has been sent to our local planning commission and will be on their agenda next Tuesday. Recommendation from our planning commission. 
board would like, we can go back through those that list of bullet points that we had from last time or discuss anything that anyone might have questions about uh, relative to those to those requirements. But um, we, we did go through them pretty thoroughly two weeks ago. Um, this is a hard stop, right? There's a hard deadline that we have to meet. We, we have a deadline of the 27th, 28th, I believe, 28th of October, in order to make any modifications to the act. And, and if, if, at what point, if it substantially changes from the reviews that we've asked for, requirement to re-advertise? If we make any changes uh, that are more than, than simple editorial changes between now and your meeting on the 27th, then it will have to go back through the process. It will have to be re-advertised, sent back to the County Planning Commission, sent back to our local Planning Commission. What, what's the, it needs uh, to pass in its current form, or, or we have to, uh, you know, we, we have to put it aside until we have a chance to start the process again. What's the minimum number of days you have to advertise before you? We have to adver advertise twice, uh, once not less than seven days, once not more than 30 days. And just so I know what our options are, um, not that we've done this in the past, but I'm just trying to make sure that we have our options covered in case something arises over the next couple of weeks before we were to vote on it. If we were to be voted on in its current form, can we amend thereafter? Yes. My understanding is we can amend. The, the significance of the deadline, that October 28th deadline, is that between the formal um, effective date of the act, which is the 28th time that we pass an ordinance, then we're operating strictly under the act that the state passed without our local amendments. So if we want our local amendments to be in force at the same time the act goes into, into effect, right. we have to do something before the 28th. I would uh, concur with that, but uh, Commissioner Andrews, the hard deadline of the 27th, 28th, uh, if you felt you wanted more in the ordinance, then I would certainly recommend that we can do that. I I'm confident uh, that that would not be a, a fundamental flaw in the ordinance. Uh, really, it's just that purgatory time period where the act says you have to have something in place and our code would not be up to that but the act is really i would say ken it's probably what 99.9 .9 is all in the act anyway so the real danger is, is right. most of what most of the regulations are in the act the difference is that we've included aesthetic requirements in our in our local ordinance which would then which would not be in effect if the act were to be effective on the 28th and we didn't have something in place Thank you. Welcome. I just want to clarify that because they are now looked at as being a utility, we have no other choice. Yes, I mean, the Crown Castle case came out and they're, they're looked at uh, as technically not as a utility, but they get a lot of the benefits of, of what a utility has in the right of way. And, and the act is very clear that this is something that needs to happen or the act control. So it's just, it's just good housekeeping to make sure our code is up to date with the current state regulations. So it's a pretty clear path, which is to move forward. Absolutely. The ordinance will be in a position for the board to act on it in two weeks. In two weeks. And we can have editorial edits, but we could not have any substantive edits at that point. And if we did have substantive uh, edits, then we would just have to re-advertise and have it in November. And again, my position would be that would be certainly fine if you felt strongly about certain things that you wanted to have in, in the order. I'm where the act would control, would trump it. <coughs> Do we need to take any uh, action tonight as far as uh, because we've, we've already we already moved for advertising, right? So really, it's consideration at the next meeting. That's the only remain. That's the only remaining step as a part of the process. That is correct. Other questions or comments? Residents, any questions or comments on this? All right, then we'll be on next meeting's agenda. 
Okay, next is uh, Public Works Committee, Commissioner Lees. Thank you, Mr. President. It's that time of year again, believe it or not, the leaves are starting to fall and the commissioners will be awarding this year's leaf pickup contract at the next public meeting. Week of collection for this year will be November 1st, November 15th, and December 6th. Please remember to have your biodegradable bags at your curb before Monday morning of those weeks to ensure that your leaf bags get picked up. 2021 Township Paving Program is officially completed. The roads look great and the contractor, Alan Myers, did a fantastic job. There were a few little hiccups as to be expected, but overall it was a smooth project this year. Uh, we're looking forward to next week's budget meeting and starting to plan on what roads will be paved in 2022. That's all I have, sir. Okay. Uh, then we're going to jump right to Parks and Recreation Committee, Commissioner Zimmerman. Programming the <laughs> Storytime series for October is the featured book is Ten Timid Ghosts, um, sold out. For November, the book will be Splat the Cat and the Pumpkin Picking Plan by Rob Scotton. Again, registration is $5 and includes the storybook and activity kit. <coughs> Read the story and complete the activity kit individually or do it as a family up your books and activity kits between November 8th and November 19th. Email pictures of the family reading and completing the activities to storybook at hatfield.org to be included in our Storytime series post. Virtual pumpkin decorating, we did that last year, it was uh, a big success. $5 registration online. Once registered, you can pick up your pumpkin um, anytime this month from the 4th to the 22nd. Photo submissions are due by the 25th. Winners will be selected in the following categories. Funniest, best carving, most colorful, best smile, most creative. Programming, we have Ready, Set, Medicare seminar, Thursday, October 21st from 6.30 to 8.30. Township building, and it is free. Guys, we've got Zumba for November on Sunday, starting 11.7 to 12.12, 12, 9 to 10 a.m. in the township building, $50 a person. Get Fit Yoga for November is Thursdays, 11 4 to 12 16, 7 to 7 45, here in the Township Building, $50 a person. American Red Cross is doing a babysitting course Saturday, November 6th from 9 to 3 in the community room, $65 for anyone ages 11 to 15. Have the Hatfield um, Township Giving Tree again this year. It'll be our fifth annual Giving Tree. It'll be featured in the lobby beginning November 15th. The gift tags on the tree are labeled with an age, gender, and gift request from a local child. Grab the tag and replace it with the corresponding gift to be no donated to a local family in need. All gifts should be new and unwrapped. Gifts can be dropped off November 15th through December 17th. Events coming up on the 27th, we've got Mini Monster Mania, 4.30 to 6 here in the Township Building, and you can pre-register at HatfieldRec.com, $5 a child. And hopefully most of you in here and for Oktoberfest a couple weeks ago, it was a um, very successful event. We had a beautiful day. Uh, we hosted over 30 vendors, food trucks, family games, bounce houses, mini golf, yard games, live music from Challenge Accepted and more. So thanks to everyone who joined us and participated and a huge thank you to everyone involved in making it happen. All the volunteers, staff and vendors. And special thank you to our sponsors, Vinnie's, Pizzarama, Liberty Urgent Care and Harleysville Bank. Lots of good stuff coming up. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna jump into Public Safety Committee. We have uh, an announcement uh, that uh, we're very uh, pleased to make that um, I was gonna let Chief uh, take the, uh, the lead on this, but I think it's better that if, uh, <laughs> that if I do it. Uh, our great news is that the Hatfield uh, Police Department we were just notified that the department is being recommended to maintain its accreditation status for the third time by the Pennsylvania Law Enforcement Accredi Accreditation Commission. So for those of you who don't know what that means, it is a rigorous evaluation that is done of the police department, not just of its day-to-day, -day, but also its uh, regular um, practices and procedures, uh, memorialized uh, policies, practices that it abides by, and on-site uh, interview and review and what was really um, uh, interesting and, and also noteworthy was that in the report that was just recently sent by the assessment team they said the following and this is a quote throughout our interactions and observations of the Hatfield Township Police Department it was evident that this is a high quality police agency with excellent supervision and leadership 
Their organization, philosophies, and practices show their continuing commitment to providing superior quality law enforcement, law, enforcement, law enforcement services to their community and visitors to the area. They demonstrated that the department is well-disciplined, well-trained, well-organized, well-directed, and professional in their duties. And quite frankly, we don't think that you really can have a better description, not only of our township, but a better of assessment. So Chief, congratulations to you. Congratulations to the entire department. We're all very proud of you. Thank you very much. I'm kind of the captain of a very sturdy ship, and you provide the sturdy ship, so thank you for that. Well, you're welcome, but I'm not done congratulating you, so there's a little bit more. I, I, done, I, I thought that it was appropriate, given that quote, that it was the right time to show the applause, but that it even goes further because I want to name some of the other people who were so involved in the process itself. So not only congratulations to Chief for his leadership, and, but also the accreditation team, which is Lieutenant Jane Robertson and Sergeant Chris Graham. I know that um, uh, Lieutenant Robertson has been doing this for a number of years, uh, but it's really started when Chief Tierney became the chief. He accelerated the process when he became chief in 2013, and the department actually reached its first accreditation status in 2015, two years after he began. Since then, um, Lieutenant Robertson has now led the department through three assessments and is, uh, I didn't know this until just recently, is that she's handing the baton to Chris, uh, Sergeant Chris Graham, who will now be in charge of the process moving forward. Um, and the report is a, certainly a, a, a direct reflection, not only in the professional services that are, that are uh, provided, but also the leadership uh, for the entire township. And that's not just you and the two of them, but our entire um, police force. I mean, I, we say it all the time that we have, you know, the, the best staff, uh, the best chief, the bus police force, best township manager, and, and these aren't just words that we say because we, uh, you know, we, we like to say them, it's because it's true. And in this regard, I want to thank you again for leading the, uh, the entire police department. It's, it is our highest responsibility, uh, protection of our residents, and uh, you do a fantastic job. So again, thank you. <laughs> All right. With that, we're going to move into the uh, Finance Committee. Commissioner Andrus. Thank you. Um, just a reminder, we have our Budget and Goals meeting next week at 6 p.m. in this room. Uh, thanks to the uh, news the uh, board shared about the pension costs going down at least uh, at last month's meeting, and it was roughly 50 percent, the budget process should be very smooth this year. In fact, the additional uh, wiggle room should allow us to upgrade some of the playgrounds that we have been deferring in the parks. Combine that with the paving this past year and the new digital signs, it will be like the Hatfield residents are getting a brand new park system. So the township has done a nice job planning that out. Um, I also want to state that there, there is no planned tax increase for 2022. That'll be for the eighth straight year um, that that is uh, that will occur. And with regard to taxes, I've, I've had a few conversations with some friends and neighbors uh, regarding the recent townships about the townships millage. If you look at the, our rate at 5.221 and compare that to some of the neighboring towns, you might get the impression that our tax uh, rate is high. However, this is not accurate. What you won't or don't see when you look at this uh, at just the millage rate is Hatfield Township has a very aggressive, generous homestead exemption rate of $70,000 and Aaron's uh, putting it up on a board. So we're, I guess, bottom third. What does that mean? Let's take a house with a $250,000 assessed value, which is actually well above the average of 149. Hatfield, the uh, homeowner gets to reduce $70,000 from the $250,000 assessed value, and is only taxed then at the assessed value of $180,000. That roughly equals a millage rate of closer to three and a half, which is lower than more than half of the towns in our county. And this isn't by accident. You know, I don't think Aaron takes enough credit for what's done in, in, in the uh, building. Um, and, and I don't think it's happened on uh, Aaron's leadership, but the township has taken some very aggressive approaches towards uh, reducing cost and containing cost. One of which is uh, for non-uniform employees, we move from a defined pension to a deferred contribution, which saves the Hatfield Township taxpayers in the long run. Uh, we entered into an insurance trust uh, to bear the cost of insurance throughout uh, the county and uh, done very well with that. And additionally, we have a tremendous um, traffic engineer where uh, he has gotten this township so many public works grants, and I think we only paid 20% of the four or five of the bridges that were put in the township not too long ago. So 
So we're very conscientious about that. And that's something the township uh, residents may not know. Hatfield doesn't have and will never have a business privilege in mercantile tax to rely on for no another stream of revenue. Therefore, uh, like many other towns, including some of our neighbors, Hatfield must rely primarily on property taxes as the major source of revenue to, the, to uh, pay for its services. And I think we had a, there's a legal uh, wrangling going on a few years ago where we tried to get that tax reenacted or allow us to enter into it and it was denied. So that we'll never have that opportunity from a mercantile tax perspective. You'll see that when Aaron does the budget presentation next, uh, in two weeks, uh, the commissioners, um, we've done a very good job of containing costs and you know, one of the biggest things we had recently was the pandemic. Um, we, we made the initial call March, April to defer some of the projects we had, not knowing or not what's, go what's gonna happen by year end. And we did a very nice job of controlling and uh, not spending the money as we would have in the past. We delayed some projects to make sure that we would come out of the pandemic uh, financially very secure. So we'll continue the effort of uh, securing grants. Uh, we've done a nice job limiting the growth of the organization, even as we've improved or expanded services that are provided to our community. Uh, lastly, I hope to see you guys next week for more information and discussion about the budget and goals for next year. And I know this is the most exciting thing today, but it's numbers, it's finance, it's important to all of us. So next Wednesday at 6 p.m. is when we'll be here to uh, discuss what 2022 looks like. All right, that's all good stuff, especially the news about next year, um, eight years in a row. And Aaron, Wednesday night, 6 p.m., does anyone, I can't remember what date that is. That is the 20th, October 20th. So for those of you who don't know, that 20th is it's our it's a, it's a budget workshop meeting. We have it here. It's a public meeting. Everyone is invited. Uh, and we talk about our goals and our strategy, what goals we had last year, what we met, uh, our strategies for the next year, and it helps us craft our budget. Um, and we do that on an annual basis, and uh, we'll do that that night and with the expectation then that a week later, uh, that's when there will be, it, we will have the formal budget presentation, no? Well, so we'll discuss it next week. November will be presented. Oh, it's the, no, budget. It's the November meeting. I need a little meeting. time to put it together for Sorry. the presentation, and then December the board approves. I was thinking it was the two meetings right now. Thankfully around. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I need a little time. Got it, got it. It's in, it's in our November meetings that we'll, uh, we, will t we will actually have the, bu the budget presentation and then the vote T Numbers. typically is in December. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, we're going to jump into our township manager's report. Thanks, Mr. President. I, I just have a quick report tonight. I, I will be talking too much next week, so I figured I'd save my voice for then. Uh, just wanted to give a lot of credit to our public works department for installing this beautiful bridge in, in our Fricks Trail. Hopefully some of you have already seen it. This is bridge number two of three. Um, that, that they have built 100% in-house um, by our department of only 10 guys. Um, the, you, you can see the stretch was pretty long. We, we were required to put in this bridge because of some of the wetlands we were going over. Uh, we had to restore the wetlands to the condition as is required by DEP. And this bridge uh, will be then open year-round for walkers and runners and bikers to, to use the Fricks Trail. They, they did an unbelievable job. Four guys hammers and nails for two, three weeks, put it together. I think oh, hammers and nails, not an air gun? Sure, they have more tools <laughs> okay. than that. It wasn't a Boy Scout project. <laughs> <laughs> I think they should start a decking company on the side, but the, they did a great job and it's been a big addition to the trail. And this trail we put in over a few years ago, uh, initially the, you know, the feedback was a little bit slow coming in. People were still trying to figure it out where it was, what was it, but now it's, now that we've improved it, the signage is better. We promoted it. It's been there now for a while. We hear about this on a daily basis from residents that use it every day, walk their dogs, bike, uh, run, whatever they, they, they do there. And, and uh, we only have more good things to come as we build it and then hopefully connect it to the Liberty Bell Trail and in Hatfield Borough and connect all the businesses and all the neighboring communities. It's going to end up being a real nice regional trail. Um, so just credit to the Public Works Department for for building this this great bridge one more to go hopefully they'll get done this um this year if not early next year and then that portion of the project will be completed and uh, we'll look to improve it other ways so thanks commissioners for all your support over the years to to fund this what has become a pretty great amenity here in hatfield yeah there's a lot of people are often asked about the trail 
I get a lot of comments about that. I'm assuming that other commissioners do as well. One of the projects we deferred last year, wasn't it? Planning on doing it, but held back. You, we, we deferred a bunch of projects last year, paving the, the, the trails at School Road, paving the parking lot at School Road, finishing some of this work. This has been a, a project that's been going on for many years that we've chipped away at it. There, I, I should put an analysis together, commissioners, because I, I honestly don't think other than labor that we spent a dime of taxpayer money on that entire trail. It was through grants, partnerships, uh, some contributions from some local businesses. It was something that we really put a lot of effort into <coughs> to not rely on the taxpayers and it, it's, it's I'm a su success. Great, great, thank you. Anything else? That's all I have. You'll, you'll hear my voice a lot next week and then again in November and then I try not to talk again for several <laughs> months. <coughs> all right, we're gonna jump over to the solicitor's report. report. Really uh, nothing to report tonight. I just wanna echo to the chief, that's a tremendous accomplishment. So. Great job there, and having been a lifelong resident of this community, our, that museum is amazing. So definitely would echo your sentiments of getting over there. A lot of rich history, it's a great community, so thank them for preserving that. It's gonna last generations, it really is. I also have it's my gotta be a wonderful yearbook. feeling, right? I also have my high school yearbook where I had great smile, a uh, great <laughs> smile. I'm gonna donate that to your uh, <laughs> museum. Do a whole exhibit if you would like. So. That's been pulled from the exhibit. By yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are some por portions of the yearbooks that are redacted, apparently, <laughs> <laughs> for, for legal reasons. Nothing else, <laughs> nothing else to report tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He's never going to offer anything else up again, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, citizens' comments. Any citizens' comments on, a, on agenda items or otherwise? Yes, ma'am. Could you go to the podium, please? Hi, good evening. My name is Linda Wagner. Uh, I live on Deer Run Road in Hatfield, which I think is Ward 5. And uh, I'm here actually uh, concerning Parks and Rec and uh, the uh, pickleball courts, the wonderful new pickleball courts that we have. Um, I belong to and help coordinate the senior citizen group that plays uh, basically every morning. Um, on the courts. And the reason that I'm here is to, uh, I guess, ask that those courts remain open for us to uh, play. Uh, we are understanding that the courts are to close at the beginning of November, and they will be closed over the winter till I'm not sure when uh, in the spring. And uh, they do offer uh, an indoor option Monday and Fridays for two and a half hours at XL Sports, and Wednesday afternoons from 12.30 to three, same at XL Sports. Uh, we're uh, a little concerned <laughs> with the fact that it is indoors and the fact that uh, basically everybody that plays, and we have, uh, we have 111 registered people uh, on our courts, we typically get 45 or more people every, um, every time we play. And uh, a lot of people were concerned about going indoors um, at this point, and we were asking to keep the courts open. Uh, I know that they've put a lot of money into the courts. We work very hard, and we work um, with Ashley and, and Christine to keep everything up uh, as best we can. I, you know, sometimes I get that uh, that name because I'm after people. You know, put your chairs on the mats and you know everything. Well, I mean, we do work at keeping the courts. Uh, we use them all the time. I know that there are a lot of people that use them uh, in the evenings. They are well used on Saturday mornings, on Sunday, uh, by people that are not <laughs> the retired group. We've got a lot of pe working people, um, children that are teaching, and so forth. Um, and that was our main concern was that, uh, you know, s well, in fact, <laughs> we had some people that, that started a, a petition from the group that plays with us um, asking to keep the courts open um, 
you know, not even necessarily through, you know, the January, February so much, but um, at least through the end of December and then open them up as early as they could in the spring. We did, you know, with COVID last year, we did play outside. And I know these courts were closed uh, for those renovations. Uh, and um, so we've, we kind of dispersed to some other courts. People were so happy with what we have here. Uh, I mean, we do have a lot of residents. We do have a lot of non-residents <laughs> that use the facilities as well. Uh, and that was kind of our request, uh, was to keep things here in Hatfield uh, because they are such nice courts. Uh, I know everybody works to keep them up. And uh, the fact that COVID has changed things yeah, I mean, it's, it's wonderful that indoor is uh, offered. Uh, and, but we've got, as I said, we've got a lot of people that uh, said, I mean, our average age is probably, I mean, in the 70s, we have people that are 78, 80 years old that are, I mean, they're like, I mean, I'm one of the young ones at 65, I think. And, you know, they're like my mentor. <laughs> I said, I want to be able to play pickleball at 78 and 80 years old. Um, the way that, that a lot of people do. Uh, so like I said, I know COVID has changed things uh, considerably. Um, it would be nice, I mean, everybody played outdoors pretty much last year. Like I said elsewhere, uh, you bundle up in fleece and scarves and it really uh, was refreshing uh, to, to stay out there. And so it was just kind of, again, our request that uh, they at least consider keeping the courts open. Uh, I know that we have the courts reserved for us and, and we do pay uh, a, a session fee for that. And I think people were still willing to um, contribute along those lines. Uh, again, we don't necessarily have to have them um, reserved for us during the winter. I don't know that, you know, there's tons and tons of people that are flocking out there and uh, we're pretty accommodating for anyone who wants to come and play. Uh, we've welcomed people to come and play multiple times. Uh, and I think that's why we have the reputation that we do. Uh, you know, people are like, uh, we really want to play here. This is, you know, it's a friendly group. It's a welcoming group. Um, you know, the, the courts again are, uh, are wonderful. Uh, and um, that's kind of all that I, <laughs> that I had to say. I don't know if anyone had questions for, for us. I don't have any for you, but the reason we're not we're close in the courts would be because of. I think b before I publicly commit to anything, I would just like to talk to Ashley to, to understand. Hmm? I'm sure she has very good reasoning behind the I decision, do. and and I. But I also think it would be great to continue the conversation and see if we can compromise. Right. I, I don't know your answer. I know there. I, I can understand if it was snowing. You don't want to probably use a shovel to just clean it off, but there's, otherwise. There's probably those concerns as well as the nets and just making sure things stay in good shape and there's always traditionally as linda knows that we've been the, uh, the the partnership with excel so they went indoors but we'll be happy to advance the conversation for you and see if we can meet in the middle or meet completely on your side i have, I have no problem with that yeah as I said, i'm not here to cause trouble i want to keep you know and not stepping on out yeah. you know no trouble <laughs> at all it's just, you know i just thought that that you know it would be nice if people were uh, aware of um the, the the support that the community has for those courts and you know given the the situation with covid um i mean it's wonderful to have both and P i know people are signed up for indoor there's a, a whole lot of people that aren't i mean we right now i think there's 51 people signed up for indoor uh, prior to covid we used to get 130 some people that were signed up for indoor uh, but a lot of people are skeptical there are people that i know that that continue to play with us that really are not vaccinated um, and indoor, there's no mask requirements, which I mean, it's fine. We wouldn't want to play with masks on <laughs> anyway. Uh, there's, but there's no uh, vaccine requirement for indoor. Um, and you know, ventilation, they, you know, they say that there's, there's ventilation. So it just, it would give us another option. It's nice that I said that the courts are there. Uh, they are. I hope outdoor courts that should, you know, could be used like 
most other facilities that are built for outdoor recreation, you know, playgrounds and, you know, trails and those types of things, um, that we do keep up with uh, the maintenance and the care of it. Linda, pickleball began in this room about yeah. seven yes. years ago it at a did. budget meeting. <laughs> yes. So it's fitting that it, it gets continued into the winter season in this room <laughs> yes. as well. So it's consistent, but uh, I'd be happy to have the conversation. I'll have Ashley get back to you after I chat with her tomorrow, and we'll see what we can do. That's fine. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. No problem. Thanks for your time. Linda, I'll tell you a funny story. The, uh, this, the first time we were presented with this concept of pickleball, the board as a whole, I think, just kind of looked peculiar, uh, oddly at the who, who was explaining to us because no one had ever really understood what it was and never experienced it. Here it is, what, seven, eight years later, and uh, we brag about how Hatfield Pickleball is one of the biggest pickleball areas in southeast Pennsylvania. And so it went from, in short order, from confusion as to what it was to, sure, let's build, let's build courts. So, uh, yeah, I think you're... Uh, I think it's a, this is a great conversation to have. And by the way, thank you. My next door neighbor across the street was one of the people who said, called me up one day, said, you know, the people with their chairs are probably going to ruin your pickleball courts unless the pickleball people take care of it. And you have. So thank you very much. Yep. Yep. He pointed it out to me. Apparently he's yep. a pickleball aficionado himself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other citizens comments? Um, I just, I'm not sure how many people are aware of this, but I would just like to acknowledge Representative Steve Maligari. Today he had a Hot Dogs for Heroes event out in School Road Park, and uh, it was for all our public works people, all our police, all our fire, um, not just Hatfield, but Lansdale was, was part of the group as well, and, and um, it was really nice to recognize all the hard work that those people put towards our communities. So, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Steve, Representative uh, Malagari. Um, citizens' comments. Any other citizens' comments? Just one thing, Commissioner. Yep. Happy birthday to the United States Navy, 246. Right. Oh, okay. Chief, you look good All for right. 246. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. A uh, motion by Vice President Rogers, second by Commissioner Andrus. Uh, all in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Hearing none, we're adjourned. Thanks for coming out, folks.